Let us pray. Dear God Almighty, we come before you to make our prayers to you. During this noon time, you always move very swiftly to accomplish the programs of heaven on the earth. We thank you for what you have done for us this day, yesterday, and the days past. Place this gathering as it seemed good to you. Visit us powerfully, your God. Amen. We are concluding the teaching on how to use the, um, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. The 
kingdom, the power, and the glory, which means that these are the three phenomenal things that speaks very highly of God. There is a kingdom that is stronger than any kingdom of the earth. And that kingdom belongs to God. And that kingdom is defined by one thing. Constructive, positive power. The importance you attach to a thing clearly make that thing visible. When you attach an importance to something, that thing begins to clearly make its presence available for you. Hallelujah. This is very important key. If you attach importance to the kingdom of God, and you ask God that you want to live like that on the earth, then God will open doors for you to begin to live like they live in heaven on the earth. What you believe about something is going to activate that thing. <laughs> what you believe about something, if that belief is a passion, it is going to activate that thing and that thing is going to open its door. In fact, that thing will give you its key. And then you can unlock and walk in and find success. For thine is the kingdom. And here is another thing, the power. Power is at the center of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, however you look at it. Power is at the center of it. The reason is this. We are relating. There is an invitation that has been extended to humanity through our being made by him, Jesus. That says, come, share in my kingdom. Come, share in my power. Being born again is not just something that gives us everlasting life. But everlasting life for what? It is an everlasting life to enjoy life, to invent and to create and also to invest it is an invitation for pleasure life must pleasure you next thing Your existence as spirit and as human, as spirit in a human form, is an invitation to represent God and to exercise power. I'm sorry to those of you who are supposed to be watching on Justin TV. The video format is not available. That's what I discovered. I don't know why. Power in whatever form you want to describe it is the exercise of the character of the Almighty God. You cannot talk about God without talking about His power. And one of the reasons why many of us 
why many of us follows the reason why many of us follow God is because of his power his power to love his power to save to redeem his power for anything you can think of his power poured out in diverse ways and means there are things that only God can do power is very attractive if there is nothing that attracts you very strongly to God at least let his power attract you into his love for thine is the kingdom and the power which means if you really need power go to God here we find out that we are having a relationship with the God of power. The power of God is so awesome that it doesn't require no argument. People in science can argue with me that the world just came about. Well, I will argue otherwise that we did not just come about. Nothing just came. Somebody sent us here. The earth did not make itself. There is nothing that made itself. I will argue very strongly. Nothing made itself. Everything we see is made by somebody. And the earth and the planets seen and unseen, even planets yet to be discovered, they were made by Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible tells us. Power is what defines the ability of God to love even beyond, beyond everything else. Power is what motivates God to move for us because humans are limited in a lot of ways. Except when you begin to stay more in the presence of God, then slowly you begin to enter into the uh, into the celestial and angelic worlds. Then you begin to enter into the lifestyle of heaven. But outside that, we humans are limited a little bit. Have you begun to ask God for power? Are you asking the Almighty God? to invest you with power. You need power. You need power. Real power to live on earth. The reason is because the other camp, there are some powers there, but there is only one power that made all things and rule over all things. The Holy Spirit has been known throughout human history to be the way by which God invests us with power, authority, force, dominion, thrones, whatever. The Holy Spirit has been known to be the one that God uses to do this. The one that goes ahead to do it because he's God. It's always until the Holy Spirit arrives before we see the exercise of the power of God in action. You need power. When you need power so that you do not keep being, you do not keep lacking energy and ability to do things on the earth due to discouragement, due to pressure and due to fear and inability to control your personal emotions. That is why I pity those who react very quickly to stuff. Because your ability to make mistakes are real and they happen quickly.
you live all your life to regret what you said or what you did. The desire of God is to share part of his character with us. And part of his character, virtue and essence is power. If you ask God to fill you with power, surely he will do it. Everyone who followed Jesus, everyone who followed Jesus, every one of them, they experienced power, power to stay away from sickness, power that overcomes Satan, power that overcomes all forms of poverty and ignorance. We need this kind of power, the power of the kingdom, the power that flows, the power that flows from the kingdom, that's the kind of power we need. The Holy Spirit is interested in coming upon you and investing you with the power of God. Not a power to be given to you to destroy people. Let's, let's enjoy a little bit of music. streaming and let everybody know so that if one video streaming site is not working we will turn to the second one I think that's just what we will do about it so I'll go back to look at other video uh, streaming site I thought we were using Ustream when Ustream began problems sometimes the video will, uh, the picture will not show uh, 
the video will not show it will only audio and today uh, Justin TV has started that also so sometimes those things are not available what can you do so that is why sometimes it's good to have your own personal video uh, streaming and so on these things they cost money really they do cost money <sighs> My desire for you is for you to be powerful. My desire for you is for you to have real power so that nobody can defeat you on the earth anymore. You have been defeated for so long and you cannot continue to walk on the earth as a defeated person. Jesus rose from the dead in order to invest you with the vestures, with the ability you need to do great things on the earth. Every one of us was sent here to achieve greatness. You better believe it. Everyone was sent here to achieve some form of greatness, some form of success. It was not some people, but all of us. Power from God is very necessary for you to stay excited about life. If you are not excited about life, you will go through life as a zombie. Yeah. Power from God is necessary so that you can stay happy. If you live a sad, bitter, misery, unhappy life, you're going to live on earth and walk along other human beings as a shadow, a phantom, a living ghost or a zombie. And the devil is always ready to use those kind of human beings who have given up to do to do things against themselves and other human beings. One of the greatest secrets I've learned in life is to do everything good within my power to stay happy. Because you see, we are used to other people entertaining us and helping us to laugh. But I've learned that if I'm ever going to, uh, to stay happy and excited, I am the one who is going to create things around me. I'm going to fill my life with things in the inside of me and outside of me. I'm going to invite the kind of people to, to be around me so that I can stay focused and I can stay happy. I'll tell you something. One negative individual in your life can make you live a gloomy life all the days of your life. Yep. Yep. That is why it's very necessary for God to anoint you with the power you need to choose people whose desire is to help you stay positive, is to help you stay in power, is to help you stay excited, passionate about life, and happy. That's why if something is not working, I abandon it quickly and move on. I do those things very quietly. I, I never want to do anything um, in violence because it's not part of my character. I mean, there are things that you just have to let go. There are people you just have to let go. The reason is you ask yourself this question, are they contributing to my laughter? Are they contributing to my joy? Are they contributing to my happiness? You rate each person and see. When they call you to check on you, are they bringing you good news? No, they are not. Then why keep them? If from morning till night, those who call you are bringing you bad news, very soon, you yourself will become a crisis. I'm telling you. If you do not know how to stay motivated, that's why at the end of my days, after being in the office and working and listening to all the different problems people send to me, reading them on emails, listening to them on the phone, as to mention, or they call me directly. When I finish, I leave it there. I don't, I don't have a second to think about any of it except when I'm taking it back to God in prayer, and that's it. 
I, I, I am attached and at the same time detached from everything and from everyone except for my small circle and my very inner circle and family and then God. There are people that you cannot be really strongly attached to. You better believe it. So you have to take time to add and to delete things, people, events, memories that are helping you add or not helping you delete. That's how this thing goes. Is your marriage helping you to be all you can be? Yes or no? Add or delete? Power is given to you to add or delete. That's all. Power is given to you to stay focused. Power is given to you for concentration. Power is given to you for correct perception. It's not given to you just for a show. It's not given to you just to holler and yell and scream. It is given to you in such a way that it's like I can walk into a room and just shout the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus three times and they all the place explode. That's what we call power. I can be praying with somebody over the phone and immediately something in me will bust out and I will shout, cough out, or throw up, vomit what is inside your belly right now that has been there all these years causing you trouble and instantly they vomit it. That's power. Or praying for somebody about their business and it explode within one week. That's what we call power. I've discovered something about the ministry God has given to me. When people understand me and they enjoy the way my ministry goes and they love me as a person and they love what God has called me to do and they contribute to me, those people have a lot of miracles. Than those who just come, they have to scam or just to see how things are and then go to another ministry and criticize. Those people don't receive nothing. Power is the ability to find somebody that you can trust and then you work with that person and result come. Power is the ability to produce result. The ability in you to produce result. And you cannot produce result except you stay focused and excited and passionate about life. Don't spend your life always thinking about what you did not achieve, what you can achieve. What about enjoying the moment? Enjoy your present victory. Spend some time and have a servant and enjoy your little or big or medium-sized victories. Very, very important. And only the power of God can change you from a, a mentality of what you want to do, you did not do, to a mentality of right now, let me do what I have to do now and let me celebrate it now. If you really have the power of God, you will learn how to reward yourself. Are you rewarding yourself? Are you rewarding yourself? Are you rewarding yourself for your own achievement? Or are you waiting for somebody to come and do it for you? When I wake up in the morning and I look at the mirror, I tell myself that I love me. And I tell myself of people in my life who loves me. I talk to 
the person in me that is my real self. And I tell him what we are going to do today. And I tell him to, in fact, before I go to bed, I talk to myself to get excited about tomorrow. I was, let me give you an example. Those kind of things prepare you for negative people you are going to meet the next day. I have been on the phone with somebody who is homeless. I mean, homeless. And many of these people are supposedly supposed to be pastors and bishops and prophets and prophetess and evangelists and apostles. And you look at their life, it doesn't show anything that God is part of their life. There is nothing in their life, whether spiritual, whether emotional, whether physical, the way they talk, the way they perceive life, that shows that the Holy Spirit or Jesus or the Father or angels are part of their lives. Sometimes I look at all you see is Satan. You don't see Jesus. And I'm like, I'm like saying, okay, madam, let me ask you this question. I mean, recently I was talking to somebody from the U.S. who is in this category. I said, Madam, don't be angry. Let me ask this question. What are you doing now to help, to help yourself change from where you are to the kind of lifestyle that you should be? Ah, the person exploded. You shouldn't be asking me that kind of question. You know that I'm very, very sensitive right now. The person charged at me. And those are people who are calling, looking for help. And like girl Vincent says, girl says, some people, I'm going to use exactly the word she used. This is not my word. This is what, this is what this partner uses. She said, some people call ministries. Some people call you just to bitch. That's her language. That's what she said. This is not me. And I and I understand that she she uses that word. Listen, she uses that word that hard to really tell you the strong the strong character of those people. The strong negative devilish character of those people. And I began to watch certain people that calls me. And I discovered they only call me to bitch. They are not calling me to get an instruction. They are not calling me for help. But it's like the deadline, the dating, dating website is not enough for them. Facebook is not enough for them. Google Plus is not enough for them. Instagram is not enough for them. All these different, different, different sites. They have gone through it. Now I am the new site. And all they want is to talk, 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 talk. And there is nothing they are talking that is relevant to me, not to God. And I am thinking of maybe getting a third telephone line that we will call the pitching line. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when people call me on the other two lines, I will ask them to call that line and, they, and let them just pitch. Mm -hmm. While I am doing yeah. other things. While I'm doing other things, while I'm doing other things, they can now talk to that line. Because they will never ask you a question. I have seen somebody talk to me. Talk. Talk on the phone. Excuse me. I have seen somebody call me and began talking. And talk. Never ask me one question. Nothing. Never ask for no help. Just talk for one hour. Actually, I left. I placed the phone near my dining and I started cooking. 
and the person talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until I came back I said are you done she said oh yes oh yes I'm glad I said thank you and I turned it off so I began to see what what girl said is true there are people who don't need no help they're not interested they're just looking for somebody to bitch with that's all that's a language and I love sometimes I love this strong language like that just to gap 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 you tell them listen if you do this this is the consequence they don't want they cannot even handle those kind of thing if you do this this is what will happen they are not interested they have already made up their mind what they want then why do you need me why are you trying to consult me the power of god yeah, the power of god is given to us to be constructive to ask holy spirit power in you is to lead you to ask the right question so as to get the right answer to solve the right problems but here they are not interested if you tell them can you try it the other way and see whether it will work for they are not interested they've made up their mind what they want you in fact some people call me they don't want God even to talk to them about their situation they don't want God so when your video appear before me and you are that kind of a person that have made up their mind what you want out of life and yet you are calling me to talk to me and God show me your video right in front of me, I will not even know. I say, God, I don't know how to start a conversation with that person because I don't want anybody to violate me or to abuse me. And when I see that, in fact, I have to recall a package that was supposed to go and help somebody have to recall it because you don't know what they are gonna do and that is why I always like God to reveal the deception and manipulation in people so that I do not need to waste my time so we will soon have that thought line so that people can go there and talk and of course, when I work in a hospital as a chaplain, we were trained and prepared for such. There are some crazy people on holidays, on weekends, who are so lonely and bored with life. They don't know what to do. They will call the hospital and say they want to talk to a chaplain about some issues. And these people will call and they will gap and bitch. They will tell you things that you have no ideas. And many of them, you don't know who they are. So what do you do? You transfer them to the bitch line and let them just bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's how we should be. <laughs> Oh yeah. One guy, one guy, one guy was so neurotic. He called the line. He called the chaplain's line, and I pick it. I say, "Yes, this is Chaplain Idikai Mary." And the guy goes, "Oh yes. Did you know what I did today?" I said, uh, "Who am I talking to?" The guy did avoided all of that. Where are you calling from? Avoided all of that. He said, "Let me tell you what I did today. We killed the rattlesnake. We used garlic, onions." And we, 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 uh, we, 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 uh, what, what is, what is that? Uh, is it Crisco, Crisco or what? We, we, Crisco, yeah. yeah. And then we, uh, we, we, we fried it in Crisco. And I just let people are eating. That's the first time I asked myself, people eat snack in America. Are you serious? With all this beef in Texas, in Kansas, in New York State, in all these farming states, 
You are talking to me, you are eating rattlesnake. That's the first time I even knew people were eating rattlesnake. I said, are you serious? Yeah. The guy said, oh, yes. Right. And I was like, why is he talking to me about rattlesnake for heaven's sake? What has this got to do with me? And you know what I did? I said, dude, wait. Hold on a minute. I transferred him. I pressed the button. Pum, 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 pum. And I transferred him to the pitching line. And he pitched in there and pitched in there and pitched in there and pitched in there until he was tired. I picked up the phone. By that time, by the time he finished, I've done like about 10 emails and so on and so forth or more. I am already into other conversation with important things happening in the hospital, people having had attack and all of that. I was dealing with major issues and this guy was busy bitching. I was eavesdropping to the conversation. Don't, don't, don't mind me. I was eavesdropping. I was hearing everything he was saying because I put it on speaker. And after a long time, I said, um, uh, friend, I have to go. Okay. Thank you very much. He said, oh yeah, thank you for listening to me. I said, you're welcome. And I hung it up. discovered something some people are so lonely that they are looking yeah. for somebody to talk to but this kind of activity it costs time and money for you to sit down and just listen to people tell you their family history that they are not asking you to help them solve it if you ask them is there something I can do for you they say no they just want to talk talk costs money it costs time I'm not getting paid to that extent that that I can just spend one to two hours. Please, please turn off your echo phone, please. Thank you. Good. You're now on. You see, I, I need to get paid a very fat salary to be able to do this kind of ministry. So people who are insane, people who are lonely, people who are bored with life, people who do not want any help from anybody, not from God, and all they want to do is just gab or bitch. I need to be paid well so as to sit there and just listen. This is true. God has to, let me tell you why a lot of people who are into counseling and crisis intervention, they themselves, their marriages fail, they have problems, yeah. is because they don't, they, they, the yes, all the negativity people are pouring into you, it begins to affect you. If you do not know how to handle you, it destroys you. And if you do not know how to detach yourself from it, it destroys you. That's why I'm very detached from all those things. When I leave the office, it's dead. I don't remember it. I'm telling you. And I have reached that place. Yeah, I have. It took me a long time to learn that. And when my eyes was open was when, when, when I was working full time in church ministry. I buried so many people. So many people. In some of the, the churches I've been to. There was one that I landed. They posted me to a congregation I landed and all the elderly people were dying left, right and center. Every week I was bearing two, three people. Every week I was conducting for a rally. So you know what? I began to detach myself. Because some of them, I become attached to them and their family, they were nice to me. Suddenly they were just dying. Boom, boom. So I asked, I asked one of the elderly gentlemen, they said, why are people dying like this? He said, they were waiting for you to finish seminary so that you can be the one to bury them. I said, you are serious. He said, yes, that there are people who are like that. They wait for the right person to arrive to come before they start leaving home. I buried so many people in my lifetime. It's unreal. So many funerals. And I baptized so much. So I began to detach myself. God must give you the power to detach. Sometimes to avoid. Sometimes to just get away. 
and it must also give you the power to recognize the right person or right people when they come into your life. I want you to begin to pray. I want you to ask God to invest you with power so that nothing on earth will destroy you. Ask God to fill you with power. Please lift up your voice and begin to ask God, Oh Father, fill me with new power. Father, fill me with new power. I need power now. Ask God for power. You need power now. Fill me with new power. God does not fill you with new power, new oil, new anointing. People will destroy you. People will overcome you. So you need new power to overcome people. New power to overcome the enemy. New power to do things that you cannot generally do. You cannot do all by yourself. Ask for this new power. Lord, fill me with new power. Fill me with new power. Fill me with new power. Fill us, your people, with new power. Fill us with new power, Lord. Jesus, fill me. Fill me. Fill your people. Fill your people with new anointing, new oil, new wine. Lord, I'm willing. We are willing to receive it. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the new power. Thank you for the new anointing. Amen. I will see you. I will see you tonight. Um, I will see you tonight by nine o'clock, nine o'clock Central Time for Millionaire Five Hundred. For those of you who wanna know the will of God concerning money, material resources, how to make money, how to acquire material possession, please do. Come. Tonight, I am going to be using a passage that we used yesterday to talk to you about how you can build wealth. How you can build wealth. And I'm going to tell you the secret of how to build wealth. There is a secret behind making money. There is a secret behind having wealth. If you are interested in having property, in having stores, in having businesses, in having bonds and shares, in having the wealth of this world, so that you will know what to do with your money and not just spend it. I want to see you tonight. I want God to talk to you about how you can have the wealth of this world. It is the will of God that you have wealth. Bye-bye. I'll see you then. Thank you. Sure, I did put it on record. <laughs>